All right, Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, guys, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times for Sagar <laughs> and I. Personally, of course, 2021 <laughs> meant breaking free from bosses and corporate yes. media, creating the fully independent show of our dreams. I mean that literally. It's meant watching that show be embraced and thrive beyond our wildest expectations. But the nation, whose activities, challenges, and successes we document on Breaking Points every day, has had a pretty rough go of it, to say the least. The year started with a frenzied mob incited and lied to by the president storming the Capitol. It would continue with new waves and variants of COVID that make the notion of back to normal feel like a delusional fantasy. We've covered a tight labor market giving hope and power to workers with one hand while inflation robs all the wage gains and more on the other hand. And of course, we are closing out the year watching the final collapse of the only serious effort Dems undertook to shore up fi family finances and stave off climate disaster. Speaking of which, we were also here to document floods, wildfires, hurricanes, and all of the terrible records we've come to expect as the climate crisis continues unabated. But what I've decided to focus my end of 2021 opus on here is how the media lied and spun its way through 2021. My final tiny attempt to set the record straight on some of the major stories of the year. Of course, a comprehensive accounting would take until we're ringing in the new year for 2023 at least. So I will limit myself here to a few of the most egregious and most widespread lies, which were told repeatedly by liberal and by conservative media outlets in service of their primary objective, that would be serving the powerful. All right, here we go. Lie number one, Biden is FDR. Now, at the beginning of the Biden presidency, we were told that Biden had hung a portrait of FDR in his office, a man he sincerely wanted to emulate. Media took this cue and they ran with it, launching a thousand takes on how Biden was just like FDR. He was the most transformational president since FDR, or my personal favorite. Maybe he's FDR and LBJ. Here is a typical example of the Biden is FDR genre from consummate insider Mark McKinnon. So I think Biden's speech was transformational rather than transitional. And uh, you know, I think that everybody uh, six months ago, including Joe Biden, would have thought that given his sort of bipartisan nature, his 48 years in the Senate, that he was going to come in and be very incremental. Obama went in as trying to be this big transformational guy and got, actually got very little done. And we seem to have flipped the script now where Joe Biden, sort of like what happened during the campaign, just is a man who's meeting the moment. He's realizing that due to COVID, due to a, a lot of other sort of things that are happening politically and culturally, that he's got an opportunity to go bigger than maybe anybody since FDR. And that's what he did in his speech last night now. And over on Fox News, they had their own version of this, routinely pretending that the Biden administration was really run by Bernie and AOC and that they were going to do all sorts of horrible things like give people living wages and affordable child care. Please, guys, don't threaten me with a good time. Now, at this point, this silly propaganda talking point hardly needs debunking. Imagine comparing a one-time check distribution and an industry-friendly infrastructure package to the sweeping vision and changes of the New Deal. FDR was intent on being radical for a generation, as he said. Biden was intent on being in bed by 8 p.m. and fulfilling his campaign promise to Wall Street that nothing would fundamentally change. But Joe Biden did do one good and courageous thing. Naturally, that is the one thing the media absolutely crucified him for. Which brings me to lie number two, Afghanistan. <laughs> we spent two decades in Afghanistan, propping up warlords with child sex slaves, sending trillions of dollars from the U.S. taxpayer to a bunch of Beltway war profiteers. President after president, general after general, they lied routinely to the American people about just what an immoral sham catastrophe grift we were all funding. And when Biden had the guts to actually end that conflict, revealing the ugly truth about our war in Afghanistan, the media across the board portrayed the first correct decision in Afghanistan in decades as a humiliating defeat. When, of course, the true outrage was the whole 20-year history of crimes and lies. Here as one example is the New York Times. Quote, President Biden will go down in history fairly or unfairly as the president who presided over a humiliating final act in the American experiment in Afghanistan. And naturally, to assess the situation, they turned to trusted and esteemed thinkers like Judith Miller, Condoleezza Rice, and John Bolton, shamelessly using the worst actors of the Bush era with a vested interest in hiding their own crimes as strategists and moral arbiters of the end of the catastrophe that they enabled. 
Well, there are two mistakes at work here. The first mm -hmm. is the strategic mistake of withdrawing, uh, which uh, Biden made, but which, which Trump fully supported. Had Trump mm -hmm. been reelected, he'd be doing the same thing. On this question yeah. of withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh, Trump and Biden are like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Thank you, John Bolton. These people, they don't care about Afghan girls. They care about their own paychecks, their legacies, and their personal ideological commitments to forever war. Every single outlet, liberal or conservative, they all sang the same song on Afghanistan. That is how thoroughly and entrenched every media outlet is to the Pentagon and the military industrial complex. And the topic of the deep state fealty brings me to my next lie. Lie number three, Russiagate. <laughs> now, past years have brought us new Russiagate lies and tangled webs of Eastern European conspiracy. But this year, the lie was in what legacy outlets decided not to tell you. Because this was a year when the tattered steel dossier on which much of Russiagate was based was fully exposed as nothing more than a partisan hit job based on rumors and innuendo, some of which actually came directly from Democratic Party operatives. Of course, Fox News was happy to crow about all the new developments to their audience since it was convenient to their team. But if you were an MSNBC or a CNN viewer, you likely had no idea that the whole thing had been discredited. Rachel Maddow, of course, led the new Red Scare for years under Trump, spending night after night speculating on when the walls would close in, when the Russia-Trump plot would be uncovered, when the speculation in the Steele dossier would be borne out as fact. Now you would think that someone who invested so much time and effort in the dossier's claims might want to let her audience know that, you know, the whole thing was total bullshit. Yeah, not so much. Now no one, of course, has tracked this better than Matt Taibbi. Instead of coming clean with her audience, Maddow just invented a new conspiracy. She framed the indictments from Trump's appointed special counsel, Durham, as payback for the Mueller investigation. Taibbi has also tracked how the outlets that have bothered to even acknowledge the collapse of Russiagate have picked on a few journalist scapegoats for sacrifice. Those designated to serve as tribute are meant to bear the brunt of the blame for the wild conspiracy theories that ran rampant through every single liberal media outlet. For wasting years chasing Cold War ghosts instead of pursuing a fact-based investigation of Trump that may actually have damaged him rather than further strengthening him, literally no one has faced accountability. All right, let's turn to economics now. Line number four, inflation. Conservatives were gleeful when inflation started to climb. They were delighted to dust off all their old Jimmy Carter references and ready with a quick explanation of why prices were climbing. It was all that dastardly spending. Completely left out of their analysis was the mon monopoly power and greed that leading has led corporations to use the excuse of inflation in order to jack up their prices as much as possible. After all, companies are posting record profits and doing better than ever. They don't have to lift their prices, certainly not as high as they have. They are doing it because they can. Also left out of the analysis is the way that offshoring and just-in-time practices, both free market fundamentalist ideas, left the entire supply chain extremely fragile. The moment there was a single hiccup in this precariously balanced global system, the entire thing seized up. There were plenty of bad inflation takes across the board in liberal and conservative outlets. But over at Fox News, they were particularly determined to mask the truth and place the blame exclusively on spending. Imagining a nation full of lazy, entitled workers with bank accounts stuffed full. To make the case, they routinely rolled out one of the wrongest men in all of economics, Art Laffer. Turkey prices, as many people run to the grocery stores today, are almost 10% higher than they were last year. Potatoes, eggs, onions, iceberg lettuce, Brussels sprouts, all, all, like, all of this is going to cost you more. And those are just a couple of the examples. On the whole, because obviously we report this every year, your Thanksgiving dinner is now expected to cost 14% more than it did last year, an all-time high. And it, so it could be the most expensive Thanksgiving ever. Art, your response. 
I was just going to tell you that I really like food and I love Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner and it makes me want to cry. I mean, you know, if you look at this, uh, you, you know, the spending is doing it. You, you know, the uh, spending is keeping people out of the labor force. Uh, the participation rate is falling in the labor force. So therefore, we have less goods supplied. You're giving all these people money. So they're buying a lot more stuff than they otherwise would have bought. When you have much more demand and less supply, prices go up. And that's exactly what happens. And now these people want to double down on it. You know, I here's a hot take. People having money to spend is actually a good thing. And what's more, this idea that Americans are just rolling in the dough right now is also a total lie. One third of Americans now say they are worse off than a year ago. That's the worst number since the total economic collapse of the early days of the pandemic. All right, though, let's get to lie number five, hiding the money. While all of this lying and propaganda is shocking, there is one big foundational lie at the heart of all corporate media coverage, left, right, and center. That is the lie that the river of cash <laughs> flowing through D.C. into the pockets of legislators and regulators has nothing to do with the terrible state of affairs in the nation today. Because there is a simple ex explanation for why BBB failed and the infrastructure package succeeded, for why Kirsten Cinema ran on prescription drug reform and then blocked prescription drug reform, for why starting wars is always good and ending them is always bad, for why the rich pay less in taxes oftentimes than their secretaries, for why the rich world is pumped full of vaccines and the poor world is left without. It is all about money. It's the simplest principle. Follow the money. Instead, corporate media, beholden to a lot of the same moneyed interests, they love to invent personality clashes and parlor games and horse race tactics and villains that they can blame for the sorry state of the nation. They normally don't allow anyone on their air who might give up the real game. So what I'm about to show you was quite a remarkable segment that we played here for you in the past. It's remarkable because of the very diplomatic suggestion from Bernie's former campaign manager that money might be impacting the analysis of paid lobbyist Heidi Heitkamp. And it is also remarkable for how the CNN host rushes in to defend the honor and integrity of this paid lobbyist and democratic arson. And this is the problem, right? You are having a backroom, closed deal conversation that isn't transparent, that isn't public. So I'm all for, hey, senators have different positions. Great, let's have it out. But what I'm concerned about is the influence of corporate lobbyists. I'm, influ I'm, I'm concerned about the influence of Senator Heitkamp and her group. Right? If, they, if the problem here is that we're talking about popular policies that people want, and they are good with taxation of the wealthy to make them pay their fair share, and we are talking about issues that if you go to West Virginia, you go to Montana, you go to North Dakota, you talk about these issues, people are on our side. So we're not fighting over, oh, hey, we're asking you to take a tough vote. We're asking you to deliver for the American pu public on the pledges that you made. And it is the influence of corporate lobbyists that are cutting oh. this proposal down, that are cutting the president down. Well, and let's and make clear. Let, let's make clear, no one is questioning sen the Senator Heidkamp's uh, 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 transparency here. I mean, we are just being transparent going forward. So her, her no, intent I, is not what's on the, the line here. I'm questioning the substance of what she is arguing about. I have no problem. Well, with, you know, I, I'm taking it good faith that she believes in what she is saying. And obviously, she's being funded to say it. However, the results of what she's trying to do is advocate for cutting down on corporate taxation. We have a problem of dynastic wealth in this wait, country. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 we've got to we've got to wrap this up, but I will say that let's that, not forget that, that the senator absolutely not, and let's not let's let's not forget this. You I do bring in corporate taxation. This isn't about corporate taxation. This is about individuals being taxed based on the transition or the transaction that their assets would go through. And I want to mention billionaires, something. Senator Heitkamp, yeah. Billionaires, Senator Heitkamp. Billionaires. That's what we're talking about. I, I don't want to. I don't want to get inside baseball, guys, here because we are we are running out of time and we have to move on to the next topic. Obviously, things are coming down to the wire in in Washington right now. I can just say that. Let's also remind our viewers that Senator Heitkamp lost her seat in the Senate for for voting her conscience too. So uh, I don't want to forget history as well. Mm. Absolutely incredible. So revealing. It is no wonder that 2021 was the year of tanking cable news ratings, mass unsubscribes, and precipitous drops in readership at virtually every legacy news outlet. It is also no wonder that 2021 saw new historic lows in media trust. And it's no wonder that so many of you opted to spend your time with us and other independent outlets instead of these clowns. 
So out of the trash, something new is being born. And your rejection of these lies makes me profoundly hopeful for 2022 and beyond. That clip is maybe the most revealing thing about Kate. Like, just if you just watch and understand that clip, you will understand everything that's wrong with Cable News. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.